Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for the Netherlands starting as Holland for EU4 1.33 France. So Holland is a nation located in the Lowlands region and it is the most popular and the most well-known candidate for forming the Netherlands in my opinion and also probably the best nation for forming the Netherlands although that could be debated whether it's actually Holland or Brabant. We start off as a junior partner of Burgundy as you all know and they also have a couple of other subjects too the nation of Flanders, Brabant and Navarres and newer players might be deterred from playing the Netherlands or trying to form them due to this sort of difficult starting situation that we have as one of the Burgundian subjects. But by using this guide you'll be getting free from Burgundy in no time, conquering all of these guys over here, making insane amounts of money, you'll have extremely highly developed provinces, a super powerful army, super powerful navy and you'll be dominating trade in the English Channel, in the HRE and even the the world. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Holland. Alright, alright, here we are as Holland and this is our starting situation. We own these three provinces right here. I think we have 42 dev and we also start off with the Dutch Polders Monument, which gives us plus 5% goods produced globally. Super, super strong. We also start off with five regiments over here, four infantry and one cavalry and 13 boats, 10 light ships for protecting trade, and 3 transports. And the thing you're gonna want to check at the start is which nations are rival to Burgundy. In my case right here it's England, France, and Savoy. Now it doesn't really matter too much which nations are rival to Burgundy, but the best nations you can get are England and France along with someone else. But any Burgundian rival will support your independence. So you can get England, France, Castile, Aragon, Savoy, Venice, Austria, Denmark, there's a ton of nations to go around which can be Burgundian rivals at the start that will support your independence but like I said the best nations are England and France although you can do it with other nations if you want to. So in my case right here England and France are Burgundian rivals which means they will support our independence but first we need to do some estate stuff so you can go into your estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy religious state and religious diplomats. We're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility and increased levies and and we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and indebt it to the burghers. Then we're gonna seize land. Now we're gonna take all of our ships, merge them, and send them right here. And we're gonna take our army, take this cavalry regiment, delete it, and we're also going to recruit the free company right here in Hog. And we're also going to hire one general. Now you can go into your advisors and check to see if you have an improved relations or diplo rep guy. I do have a diplo rep guy and even though he's a level 2, I'll only use him until I get everyone to support my independence and then I'll just fire him. So it doesn't matter that he's so expensive. And once you get a diplo rep or improved relations guy, and it's totally fine if you don't have one, we can go ahead and ask nations to support our independence. And like I said, it'll be Burgundy's rivals. And in my case, it's England. France and Savoy, precisely Burgundy's rivals. In your case it could be Castile, Aragon, Venice or other nations like I said at the start, but England and France are the best. So there we go, I'll just ask England to support my independence and I'll do the same with France and once one of these guys is back, I'll also ask Savoy. You really only need one of these guys, but the more the merrier, am I right? Now it's time to wait for these diplomats to come back. But now that those guys are back, I also ask Savoy to support my independence, and now I can totally fire this guy once a month ticks by. Now we need to ask for military access through a bunch of these guys over here. The reasoning behind this is, we're sort of trapped over here between Burgundy and their subjects when declaring independence. So they'll just rush us, beat up our armies and siege us down. So really, we want to run away through the HRE and pop out in the south of France. So then we can link up with France and England and go and siege Burgundy from the south. So we want to run away something like this. So now I'm going to be asking a bunch of guys over here for military access. That's what you should be doing too. By this time, you'll have the free company and you will want to attach it to your main army. And there we go. A month has passed exactly and these are the nations I've asked military access through. All the way up to Switzerland right here and of course through Switzerland I'll be able to enter Savoy and then through Savoy we'll pop out in the south of France because Savoy does support our independence. And at this point I'll also fire this Diplorep guy and hire a mill advisor, preferably a fort defense morale of armies or disciplined guy. Since I won't be planning on fighting too much, since I am weak anyway, and you should be doing the same, I do think a fort defense guy is the best. And we'll also activate the defensive edict in our state over here. But now that a month has passed, we can totally declare our independence war 
versus Burgundy. Now, it also depends if you get like really strong guys to support your independence, maybe like England, France, and Castile, or England, France, and Aragon, or something like that, sometimes Burgundy can just let you go without fighting an independence war. Although I do think fighting an independence war is slightly better, because you will be able to take some stuff. And before we declare, you are also going to want to set some provinces over here as provinces of interest. Basically, all of Flanders' provinces and all of Brabant's provinces over here. And since your allies will be doing most of the work, not a lot of these are going to get occupied by you, but you are going to want to try and occupy at least one of Breda, Antwerp, or Bruges. We are going to want to take one, if not two, of these three provinces in our first war. The reason behind this is we need Breda to form the Dutch nation, the Netherlands, and Antwerp and Bruges are super valuable farmland provinces. As you can see, they have super high dev. They also have centers of trade, which is awesome, and they produce super high value trade goods like cloth and glass which can later turn into gems. So you're gonna try and siege one of these three. It's fine if you don't, but it's better if you do. And once you've done that and set these provinces as provinces of interest, it is time to declare our independence war. Burgundy's allies don't matter too much, but they usually won't ally any strong nations at the start. In my case, they have allied Navarra, Milan, and Friesland, which of course will be super annoying, but it's not a problem at all. And then we're just gonna declare our independence war. Boom, just like that. Of course, we will lose stability, and we'll get a random ruler. I got a 462 guy, which isn't that bad. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And before we stab up, you're gonna wanna check to see if you have a stability discount admin advisor, which I don't. If you do, hire him and then stab up. But since I don't have him, I'm just gonna stab up regularly. And now, it's time to run away through all the nations we've gotten military access from. So, I'm gonna go something like this, then down here, then through Switzerland, and then I wanna pop out somewhere down here. Just like that. At this point, you can also dock your ships in England, since you don't want them to get crushed by Burgundy and their subjects. And, you can also pick a naval doctrine at this point. I recommend galley combat for now, but later, when we get very rich and beat up our rivals, we can switch to merchant navy. Once the war has started, you will want to tell one diplomat to improve relations with allies, and with the other diplomat, you're gonna spy on some other nation that you're gonna fight after this war is over, which is gonna be Utrecht, Gelray, or Friesland. So check whichever of these guys is the weakest. In my case, Utrecht here seems to be pretty weak, so I will spy on them once I can do that. There we go, as we can see, I've popped out in the south of France. I will enable friendlies to attach right here on both of the armies, and I'll go help some of my boys siege down Burgundy over here. I am also fighting Milan, which is another front I have in southern Italy, you may or may not have a nation you're fighting down here. It's different for everyone. Alternatively, you could also not siege here and go up to the Netherlands to try and siege down one of the three provinces I mentioned earlier. And as we can see right here, even though the nation of Armagnac was the first nation that sieged down Bruges, it's actually transferred occupation to me, most likely because I have them as provinces of interest. And there we go, in my case, the war is pretty much done. Navarra wasn't even in the war. I pieced out Milan for money and war reps and I pieced out Friesland with a white piece since I will want to fight them soon. And because I've set all of these provinces as provinces of interest, everything has been transferred to me or I've sieged down everything. And when you're in a situation like this, when you control all three of the provinces that you're interested in, here's what you're gonna take. Of course, the first thing we're gonna demand is for Burgundy to grant us independence so we can do everything else. And once that's ticked off, I do recommend that you also get either Bruges and Breda or just Antwerp. This is totally up to you and it's totally dependent on how much aggressive expansion you're comfortable with, but I recommend either taking Bruges and Breda or just Antwerp. I do think taking just Antwerp is slightly better so that's what i am gonna do but like i said it's totally up to you and it's your choice then once we get independence and take whichever provinces we want i do recommend that you make burgundy cancel their overlordship over some of their subjects most notably the two other junior partners up here like brabant and flanders and then, with the rest of the war score, you should take the maximum amount of money possible, which is about 280 ducats in my case. So that's it. Independence, a province or two, and make them pop out these two guys up here. The nations that supported your independence will be angry that you're not giving them anything. But don't worry about this at all. We don't really need their protection anymore, since we'll be in the HRE anyway, and Austria will protect us. And even though they most likely will break their alliance after we finish this war, I found 
it super, super common that they are willing to ally us right away after they break our alliance. In about 8 out of 10 games, that is possible. They will break your alliance, but they'll want to ally you right away anyway. So no need to worry that these guys are angry. And that's our first war done. Just like that, we're an independent nation that's in the HRE, and now we can move on with our game. At this point, of course, war exhaustion will probably be super, super high since those guys sieged you down, so you will want to reduce that a little bit, let it tick down, and you're going to want to core the province after that. And of course, at this point, you can also select rivals. I recommend rivaling all the guys around you that you want to fight immediately. For example, I am going to rival Brabant, Flanders, and Utrecht. And now it's time to chill for about four or five years, let aggressive expansion die down and then we'll move on with our wars. At this point, of course, you can take your navy, tell these 10 light ships to protect trade and the English Channel and go home during war, and you can tell your three transports to dock. If you're losing money, of course, you are going to want to fire your advisors and pay off some loans as soon as you can. At this point, it's also a good idea to get some other allies, preferably small guys over here in North Germany, that will help you out in your wars over here. So I am going to ally Brunswick right here and probably Munster as well. And there we go, it's been a couple of months and England and France have broken their alliance with me and Burgundy has warned me, which means if we want to fight nations that border Burgundy, we're also going to have to fight Burgundy. This is super, super common. Don't worry about it. And like I said, even though these nations broke their alliance with me, France is immediately willing to ally me again. Just like that. Super, super simple. And if you have to pick between one of England and France, it is better to ally France. At this point, you can also improve relations with outraged countries. Once the independence war is over, of course, you can give out clerical advice advisory council, aristocratic councillors, and commercial advisory board. Just want to point out a little error I made earlier when I told you to select a naval doctrine. Of course, I did say to take galley combat ability, but we don't have galleys right at the start, so you can totally open up with merchant navy. Once you core up the provinces that you took in your opening war, you will be able to take the mission Assert Our Sovereignty, which gives us mill power. Once you've embraced tech 4 in all categories, you can activate the Encourage Development State Edict in your capital state, and I do recommend deving Amsterdam up to 30 30, preferably in mill and in dip, but you can dev in admin too. This is to speed up the spawning of the renaissance a bit and to tick off the age objective for a 30 dev province. And once a little bit of time has passed, it is time to declare your next war versus one of Utrecht, Galray, or Friesland, depending on which of these nations is the easiest to fight. In my case, Friesland is allied to Burgundy and Galray has three allies, which means Utrecht here in my case is the easiest to fight. And that's great because we do need the province of Utrecht to form the Netherlands. So I'll just declare for Utrecht right here. You're gonna call in one or all of your boys that are willing to help you out. And it's time to declare on the weakest out of these three nations. For your tier 2 government reform, you should of course take strength and noble privileges. And now this war is done, unfortunately Brunswick did get pieced out and they made them break their alliance with me, but it's no problem. And when fighting any of these nations, you're gonna take as much as you're comfortable with. So I took this one province right here, that was 30-ish dev, and if you took these two, that would have been around 40, which means it depends on your first war what you can take in the second one. But if I take just the province of Utrecht, that's 21 AE, so we're good, no risk of a coalition. And if we full annex them, it's 32, once again, a bit more, but still no risk of a coalition. So I I am comfortable full annexing Utrecht here. Of course, you might want to take a little less so you can do more wars, but if you take more, you'll do less wars. Basically, the more AE you have, the slower you'll be. But I am going to full annex Utrecht right here. Of course, you could alternatively vassalize some nation over here if you want a little less aggressive expansion. Just make sure to not vassalize anyone that's your rival because it is going to be hard to get them loyal. For example, if I fight Gelray here, I might vassalize them since we're not rivals or Friesland. But since Utrecht is, I am gonna full annex them. And that's my second war done. You could have fought Utrecht, Galway, or Friesland and taken one or two provinces from them. Now it's time to chill a bit more. Around this time, you'll probably also be able to embrace the Renaissance and I've also deved Amsterdam up to 30, 10 in each category. I know it's not the optimal way, but oh well. And you could of course also sell the Renaissance to any nation that's willing to buy it once you embrace it. I'll sell it to France, 2.45 ducats a month, not bad at all. And now you're just gonna keep improving relations with allies, improving relations with outraged countries, and 
spying on guys around you. And here's something super weird that happened in my game. Austria is a junior partner of Munich and France is contesting that PU. So most likely in my game here, we're gonna see France with Austria as a junior partner. If that's not cursed, I don't know what is. Of course, that will make France super powerful here in my scenario. So if that happens, I will break the alliance with France on purpose so it doesn't influence my game too much and make it irrelevant for you guys watching. And they're even calling me in, which of course I will accept. Of course, when you pay off your old loans, you should take new burger loans and use them to build a couple of buildings. Of course, the first buildings we want to build are marketplaces to improve our trade situation in the English channel even more. And of course, you're going to want to build one in Amsterdam, one in Hog as well, and in Antwerp and every center of trade province that you own. Bruges, maybe even East Friesland. After your second war, you are going to want to build up your navy a little bit. I just took out a few more regular loans and I'm building one more light ship to bring it back up to 10 because these guys got beat up a little bit. And I'm also building 10 galleys. And once you do build up some ships and you have at least 50% of Castile's naval strength, as we can see, they got 23 ships in my case. I have 16, which is of course more than 50%. You will be able to take this mission it gives you morale of navies, ship durability, and navy tradition. Of course, you might want to save it in preparation for fighting a strong naval nation, but then again, Castile will build up its navy, and you'll need to build up even more, and it won't always be available. So take it if you want to now, but if not, you can totally save it for when you fight England or someone like that. And once you own three forts, you'll also be able to take the mission fixed garrison system, that gives you fort defense and garrison size. You can of course take this whenever you want to. And that succession war just ended, and in my game, right here ladies and gentlemen we have france with austria as a junior partner although they are super super disloyal and won't even help out in any wars i call france in so if france does get too powerful basically if they get austria loyal i will break this alliance in order to not skew my game too much and realistically you won't be getting a lot of help from your big allies either way the more important allies are the small guys in the hre you're fighting small guys other small guys will help you the only time france or england might be useful is when you fight burgundy later. And we have another thing that's pretty unfortunate in my game here, Galray is a junior partner of Burgundy. Oh well. And when you unlock Admin Tech 5, of course, you will be taking your first idea group. Now, Holland and later the Netherlands are, of course, a nation you will want to colonize with. But since our position is sort of a little further away than the usual colonizers like Portugal and Castile, and later, of course, England and France, I don't recommend choosing exploration and expansion for your first two idea groups. I, in fact, recommend picking them later as your third and fourth idea groups, respectively. But if you think you'll fall behind on colonization or something like that, you can totally go with them as your first two. But what I recommend taking as your first idea group is actually quantity ideas. Now we're sort of leaning into the whole development and trade and making money meta right here because quantity will enable us to field massive armies and we do have very nice policies that go along with quantity later that we'll be taking with economic and trade and exploration and expansion and stuff like that. And of course this will help us be a lot more powerful in the early game as well and to help us fight the big guys easier. So we're gonna go with quantity for our first idea group. Of course, if you really wanna kick off colonization early, like I said, you can go with exploration first. And of course, if you take exploration, you're gonna focus on dip. If you take quantity, you're gonna focus on mill. And looks like all this fighting for France was for nothing because the ruler died and Austria broke free because they had a negative opinion. And at this point, both England and France declared wars on Burgundy, which is awesome. That means they won't defend the nations that I border and that they border as well, because like you guys remember, they are are warning me. And by the time the truce from your first war expires, it is time to declare on another nation, basically our third war. Basically, whoever is weakest out of the three nations I mentioned previously, but also out of Flanders and Brabant because by this point your truce with them will be up. And in my case right here, the weakest nation does seem to be Brabant, which is excellent because we can take Breda from them, a nation that we need in order to form the Netherlands. And now that my war with Brabant is done and your war is done as well, you're once again gonna take as much as you're comfortable with, of course mainly focusing on provinces that you need to form the Netherlands and on provinces with nice trade goods and especially centers of trade. So we can see right here that if I want to full annex Brabant, I'll get a coalition. Let's see what happens if I just want to take this, that's 37 AE, this is 27 and just this is 13. So I will be taking these two provinces up here, which give me only 27 aggressive expansion and I'll leave Brabant itself for later. And of course, I'll also take all their money and I'll humiliate them for an age objective as well, along with war reps. 
and that's my third war done. When you wrap up your third war, you should have six to eight provinces. For your first age ability, you should of course select justified wars for minus 10% aggressive expansion impact, since we are conquering so many high dev provinces. And by the way, I'm just helping out Savoy in their war versus Burgundy here. It's not me that attacked. Once a little bit of time has passed and aggressive expansion has once again died down, it's time to continue your wars, again picking the weakest nations. This time, I'm gonna fight Flanders here, because like I said, we do focus on centers of trade. So I'm gonna declare for Bruges here, call in these two boys, and I am gonna declare on them. And now that this war is done, I'll once again be taking as much as I can. And remember, you're doing this with any nation right here. Like I said, this guide is sort of focuses on a tall-ish Netherlands gameplay, where you would probably go for the low countries and the English Channel or something like that in Europe, and focus on playing tall over here, while establishing a colonial empire in the New World and in the rich provinces in East and South Asia. So that's why I'm focusing on nations in the lowlands and nations in the English Channel trade node. You're going to be fighting those same nations. And in this war versus Flanders right here, of course, I will focus on Bruges the most since it is their best province. And let's see if I can take something else. But taking one more province would be a little too much aggressive expansion and it would slow down my conquests, even though a coalition wouldn't really form or wouldn't really be a problem. So that's why I'll just be taking Bruges in this war and I'll take war reps transfer trade power and money. Of course, during all these wars, I am building a bunch of buildings and I am devving as well. Since I am nearing my max diplo points, I've been devving production in some of the cloth provinces. Well, at peace when playing as Holland or the Netherlands, it's also not a bad idea to activate the protect trade state edict in pretty much all of your states that have centers of trade or very highly developed provinces. So I am going to activate it in these two right here in these two states. And I'm also going to activate it over here when I core that up. Once you get Admin Tech 7 for your second idea group, if you opened up with quantity, I recommend going with economic. This will boost our economy massively, it'll give us even more dev discounts, and it'll lean into the whole playing tall in Europe meta while colonizing outside of Europe. So, economic for your second idea group. Of course, if you opened up with exploration, you're gonna go with expansion. And of course, if aggressive expansion is super high, you could always tell your merchants to establish communities for even more improved relations. The nations that'll be mostly mad about what you're doing are nations located over here in this region, so you are gonna wanna do that in the Rhineland, Champaign, and English Channel trade nodes, respectively. I'm not doing that, since my aggressive expansion isn't that bad. And like I always say, don't hesitate to take new burger loans when you pay off the old ones. Loans get bigger as you grow bigger, and right now, they are 76 ducats, which is awesome. I just got 438 ducats. And keep checking what buildings you can build. I've already built marketplaces in the three center of trade and estuary provinces I have. I'm gonna build one more in Bruges right here. I've been building production buildings as well in all the high-value trade good provinces. I'm gonna build one in Utrecht and here Toggenbosch as well. And now, I'm gonna save up some money to bump up these centers of trade to level 2. And I'm also focusing on getting to 20 light ships in this fleet that's protecting trade in the English Channel. For your second age ability, you should take transfer subject and claims bordering claims so you can spy on nations that you directly don't border. For example, with this, I could also spy on Hainaut right here and get a claim on them because I already have claims on these provinces right here. So you basically can chain claims and then I could fight Hainaut and vassalize them or something like that. Once you get the 20 light ships, you will be able to take the mission Sea Beggars, which gives us light ship combat ability, which isn't that helpful, and blockade efficiency, which is a bit helpful. Also, when you get those 20 light ships, you can play around with protecting trade a little bit to see what gives you the most income. Right now, I'm making 5.96 ducats a month. Let's see what happens if I tell them to protect trade in the English Channel. And now I'm making 7.97, which means 20 light ships protecting trade in the English Channel gives me two ducats. However, let's see what happens if I tell 10 of them to protect trade in Lubeck. Will I make more money like that? And by the way, this tooltip right here that tells you how much money you're gonna make by protecting trade isn't accurate. And there we go. Now I have 10 protecting trade in the English Channel and 10 in Lubeck, and I am making about 0.3 ducats less which means I need to tell these guys to go back to protecting trade in the English Channel as well. And that's pretty much the gist of trade, guys. I know a lot of people struggle to understand how trade works and stuff like that in the game, but it's pretty much just trying different things until you see what works the most for you. You could also move around your merchants. Maybe you're going to want to put a merchant here to see if you get more money if you transfer from the North Sea instead of Lubeck. Maybe you're going to want to put a merchant to collect in the English Channel, which shouldn't really be done, but I'm just giving you an example that you should move around merchants and check and 
compare to see what makes you the most money. For your third government reform, I recommend taking centralized bureaucracy. And here's an example of the trade stuff I talked about. I just got my third merchant from our national ideas and he is free. So let's see where we will make the most money with him. First, I'm gonna tell him to transfer from the North Sea. And right now I'm making 11.37. And now that a month has ticked over, I'm making a ducat and a half more. Let's see what happens if we put him in the Rhineland. And there we go, now he's in a Rhineland and we can see that I am making about a ducat more than if he was in the North Sea. Now it's 1362. Now let's see what happens if we tell him to collect in the English Channel. And now I'm making 14. So that means this is the best place for him to be right now, even though it's generally not that recommended to have a merchant collecting in your home trade node. But until I get a bigger foothold over the Rhineland or the North Sea, this is probably the best place to have him. Alternatively, if you already put him over here, maybe you could tell him to establish communities. And when a little more time has passed, it's time to once again move on with your wars, focusing on the highest value provinces, and now I'm gonna fight Gilray here to get the final nation I need to form the Netherlands. They do have a couple of allies, but France and Brunswick will help me out, so it's not a big deal. And now that this war is done, let's see what we can do to Gelray here. If I take the province that I need, it's only 21 AE, and if I fall annex them, it's 36. And even though there's a risk of a coalition, as we can see right here, there's only two nations, which means a coalition can't actually form. For a coalition to form, you need four nations to be able to join. And I also have truces with these two nations down here, so it's even better. So I'll be full annexing Gelray. Like with every nation that we're fighting here, we're taking as much as we can, while not letting the aggressive expansion slow us down too much. Much. During this entire part of the early game, because we've been taking quantity and economic ideas, basically a mill and an admin idea group, and we've pretty much had claims on every province that we've conquered, we haven't been really using diplo points for anything other than teching up and devving. If I go into the dev here, we can see that almost all of my provinces with high value trade goods are super highly developed in production, and this is gonna net us a lot of money now, and especially a lot in the long term. So just set provinces by the ones that are cheapest to dev and dev them up with all those extra diplo points you're getting. I've been hitting the cap here super often, and I'm just gonna dev Bruges over here and Hertog and Bosch a couple of times. At this point, you can also look for some other allies as well. I can ally Denmark here in my case, which is gonna be super, super nice. Now that we've cored the previous provinces up and a little bit of time has passed, I will be declaring my next war, which is gonna be versus East Frisia right here. I'm declaring on them because they do have an estuary, and that's gonna net us a lot more trade power in the English Channel trade node. By this point, you should already be the dominant power in the English Channel, if France has taken this from England. If England still owns this, then you might be second. As we can see right here, I hold 46% of the power in the English Channel, whereas England has 28. And with this, I think it'll increase to around 50. So I am gonna declare on East Frisia. I am gonna call in France to help out, cause why not? And now this war is done as well, and I'll be full annexing East Frisia. Like I said, you don't have to full annex every nation that you're fighting. You can also vassalize some of them for less aggressive expansion, and then annex them later. Just be careful not to vassalize rivals. When you do unlock the shipyard building, I actually do recommend building a bunch of these buildings. Because you see, we will need a massive navy and a massive naval force limit and sailors for everything that we're going to be doing with colonizing. Basically for the trade companies to be able to move massive amounts of armies to India at the Southeast Asia and to North and South America wherever we're gonna colonize so having a very high naval force limit is something that we do want. Of course don't prioritize these buildings but if you've already built marketplaces everywhere that you need to and you've already built production buildings in all the high value trade good provinces building shipyards that give you plus two naval force limit isn't a bad idea at all. So I am actually gonna build them in every province that I can. Don't worry about building slots and manufactories later. For example I won't have a free building slot after this and hog but by devving it up once or twice which you will be doing a lot of just like this you will unlock another possible building slot and you can build manufactories and everything else so do construct shipyards and as we can see by building all of those shipyards my force limit is now 60 instead of 35. And with that, I am gonna be building a lot of transports, something like 30 transports maybe, enough to fit an entire stack on it, and of course we will be building quite a few heavies to go along with that as well. Of course when you get the money. No need to take out loans for that just yet, because we will only need those when we get exploration, which is gonna be in about 20 to 30 years. But it's nice to be prepared. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically we started off as the nation of Holland, and by getting Burgundy's 
rivals, preferably England and France, to support our independence, we were able to easily fight an independence war versus Burgundy and get free from them and that war, and also take either Antwerp or Bruges and Breda in that initial starting war. After that, we reconsolidated a little bit because our war exhaustion would have been probably super high and we would have had some loans to pay off, but after that, you should have continued to expand in these nations over here in the Lowlands region and English Channel Trade Node, basically fighting whichever one of your neighbors is the easiest to fight, like Utrecht, Gelray, Friesland, East Frisia, maybe Liege as well, Flanders and Brabant too when your truce runs out with them, and even nations that have popped out over here in my case that someone made Burgundy release, such as Picardy, Hainaut, and Luxembourg as well. And by taking it slowly and going one or two provinces at a time, focusing on the provinces that you need to form the Netherlands, and on provinces with centers of trade, by around the 1490s you should own every province that you need to form the Netherlands, along with every center of trade province in the Lowlands region. If you have something like Calais, or even this one, or this one, or even provinces in England, that's an excellent bonus. But by this point, you should have the five provinces you need to form the Netherlands, which are Breda, Utrecht, Gelray, Hague, and Amsterdam, two of which we start out with, and you should own the centers of trade in Bruges, Antwerp, and East Friesland. By this point in the game, our provinces are super, super highly developed. As we can see right here in the dev interface, I have devved so many of them, especially the ones with high value trade goods up and above 10 production, and the only ones that I really haven't devved all that much are, well, East Friesland, one that I just conquered right now, and then the two cow provinces, which aren't that important for making money. By this point, you will have fulfilled or almost fulfilled quantity ideas, and you may have fulfilled or should be close to fulfilling economic ideas, and you should be running an almost full army stack. I have a 24-4-4 right here. Pretty solid for now. I will add three more cannons to this right now, actually. There we go. And you should have about 20 light ships protecting trade in the English Channel or 10 in the English Channel, 10 in Lubeck, split between the other trade nodes that you own or something like that. And you should have a pretty sizable transport fleet that's gonna help transport your massive armies over to the New World to establish colonies quickly, conquer provinces in trade companies quickly, Quickly and establish a foothold in the East Indies and in the Spice Islands as soon as you can in order to route all that sweet sweet trade all the way from East and Southeast Asia to India to East Africa to South Africa and then to Guinea and after that up to the English Channel and by this point you should be the dominant force in the English Channel all of my centers of trade are upgraded to level 2 by this point you should have been building a ton of buildings like I said marketplaces in all the center of trade and estuary provinces workshops in all the high value trade trade good provinces. You don't really need to focus on churches and army buildings that much. You shouldn't be suffering with manpower because we took quantity, but of course later you will be building manufactories. And like I said, don't forget to build shipyards. We do need a massive, massive naval force limit to help us in the new world and in the trade companies in Africa and Asia respectively. And by this point, you should be totally ready to form the Netherlands as soon as you hit Admin Tech 10. Except, you shouldn't actually form the Netherlands as soon as you hit Admin Tech 10. What I like to do, and what most players recommend that you also do, is that you first need to conquer everything that you plan to conquer in the HRE before forming the Netherlands, because by forming the Netherlands, you will be immediately ejected or automatically leave from the HRE. And Dutch ideas and Netherlands ideas are the same, they're the Dutch ideas, so really you're not losing out on too much, except that you will get the additional Netherlands missions, I think. I may be wrong right there. They might be the same with the Holland ones. And of course, the Netherlands government reform, which is also super nice. But what I would do is conquer everything that's in the Lowlands region. So this right here. And after that, I would form the Netherlands because I don't want to fight the emperor and their allies every time I want to fight someone in the HRE. And it's pretty funny that in my case, the Palatinate is actually the emperor, which isn't that bad. But in your case, most likely it's Austria, which may have Hungary, which may have Bohemia, which may even have Burgundy. So don't form the Netherlands until you conquer everything that you want to conquer in the HRE. Of course, when you form the Netherlands, you should take the Dutch Republic government reform. It is a great government reform. You do get it through an event, so you don't get it immediately when forming the Netherlands. You should be mindful of that. And after this point, you'll continue to expand in the same directions that we've already been expanding in. You'll continue to finish up all these tiny nations over here in the Lowlands region. And pretty soon, you should be declaring on England as well right here with the help of France, of course. They probably 
probably won't land in England to help you out there, but with your massive navy by now, and of course you can build up a lot more galleys and heavies to help you crush the English navy, you should be able to easily invade the island of Great Britain and take a hold of everything that you want to over there. Personally, right here in my game, like I said at the start, how I like to play is I like to conquer the entire lowlands region along with the entire English Channel trade node. So everything right over here, and then these provinces right here, and then all of these right here, and that's how big I like to make my Netherlands and Europe, and every other piece of expansion I'm going to be doing is going to be in Africa and in India, and maybe a little bit in North America too. Speaking of colonizing, like I said at the start, for your first two idea groups, you should have taken quantity and economic, and after this, you should take exploration and expansion, and start going down the coast of Africa, into India, and then into Southeast Asia. The old world should be your primary focus, and colonies in the new world should be your secondary focus, and you should of course focus on colonizing North America primarily, because that's how the trade is routed. You'll get benefits for from everything north of Mexico, kinda, sorta. And after exploration and expansion, I do recommend going quality for your fifth idea group or offensive and then trade for your sixth idea group the final two are up to you for your tier four government reform you should take meritocratic recruitment for your tier five you should take general estates and then swap to royal decree and then swap back to general estates you already know the drill i've said it many times in previous guides for tier six you should go for latasamoa and for tier seven you should go for political absolutism but like i said before you can swap to legislative houses if you max out over 100 absolutism and by this point you should have a super super nice income i'm making 12 ducats a month right now with this huge huge army if i stop drilling right here and lower army maintenance it's 17 ducats a month i do have a couple of burger loans that i took out for buildings if i turn off forts i'm making 20 and i'm also running a level 2 advisors in every category so you can already know how much money we're making our total income is 40 right now and trust me in about 50 more years it's gonna be 400 the ability to make money as the netherlands is unparalleled by any other nation except for maybe an England to Great Britain run at least in the early game. And like I said, Baron, the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities, or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available to all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel, and you can continue playing as Holland from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you wanna watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Redhawk live, and if you wanna catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel, link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you wanna see more guides or more UFO videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.